All right, we're going to go a little bit further in setting the region of integration. The functions we're going to look at are not going to be particularly difficult, but I think you're still going to find that you get some good mental exercise. There's a little chorus of frogs from the backyard in the background, just for a little ambiance while we're doing Calc 3 here. So here we go. We are going to be looking at setting up a double integral with a function that's unknown, could represent dimension number three. Um, and this is going to represent a region of integration. Again, the function is some third dimension that might be above this triangle. This R here, it's a notation I haven't shown yet, um, is short for the region of integration, which would refer to this two-dimensional triangle right here. And let's just assume that is a line segment. So before we get into setting up the integral, um, let me just remind you of a couple of details. Um, first, uh, when we think of x, uh, we are thinking from left to right, small to big, and we're thinking of the y values, we're thinking of the bottom or the lower section to the top. And one more little detail, if you recall when we integrate a function in Calc 1 style, the fundamental theorem says once you find some antiderivative and you do the substitution, we are looking for this to be a numerical value when we're done integ integrating the double integral. So that means we need a and b to be constants. No variables there. We've just started to see that there could be variables on our boundaries. And a better way to write this is that when we set up our double integral, a to b, and then I'll just call it c to d for a moment. We need this last integration has to be constants or scalars so that at the end of the problem, we can end with a numerical value or a scalar. All right, so here we go. Here's the problem in question. Left to right, x goes from 0 to 20. All right, so we're going to have x goes from 0 to x goes to 20. But bottom to top is kind of interesting because as you go from left to right, the top doesn't change. It's always 10. But the bottom is, well, it's not the same place. And if something is not constant, then we definitely call it variable. So I'm going to use a temporary notation here. I'm going to say y equals whatever that line is to y equals 10 because the line represents the bottom and y equals 10 represents the top. So as we gear up to write our double integral, recall that this is going to be the x integration and this is going to be the y integration. And x goes from 0 to 20. But then the y values, they are varying between this line and this top boundary, which is y equals 10. The top boundary is constant, but the bottom boundary is not. So now let's look at the line real fast. We have a line that goes from here to here. Um, its slope 
is up 10 and over 20, otherwise known as 1 half. The equation of that line, my students, is y equals 1 half x. That is what we're going to put right here as our lower boundary. This varies as you go left to right. And from left to right, we're going from 0 to 20. But the y values go from this line to upper boundary of 10. So far, so good? OK, good. All right, here's another region of integration. If we look at this shaded region under the parabola, the parabola's boundaries um, for x values from left to right are going from x is 0 to x is 5. That's our left to right. But the y values are going, well, let's see. What are they doing? The lower y boundary is the x-axis. I'm just going to call it x-axis for just a moment. That's not an equation, but I'm going to just keep that as a place value. And the upper boundary, once again, it's changing. It's this parabola. And I'm just going to call this parabola. Those are certainly not actual equations, but just a way of looking at it. I wrote really small there. So what is the equation of the x-axis if we're writing it as y equals? Well, yeah, that's y equals 0. And then we're actually given the equation of the parabola is y equals x squared. So we set this up as a double integral. What we have here is our x values going from 0 to 5, and our y values, so that's x, and our y values are going from y equals 0 to y equals x squared. That's a really messy box. All right, let's add another trick to our list of tricks we're trying to develop. What if we were to set up this problem with the same region, but we wanted to establish the order as dx dy? What if we wanted to do that? So I'm going to now start counseling you in, in terms of what you could do as a first order of business when you're thinking about the solution. dx, dy. The last integration we need to have constants for the boundaries so that when you do the final integration, you get an actual numerical value. So this could have variables in it. It may have constants, but it could have variables in it. So we know that this is going to be a y equals, because the last integration is dy, and this is an x equals. So if we go back and look at our picture again here. Notice that those y values are going from bottom to top from 0 to 25. So the y values go from 0 to y equals 25 are going to be the constant boundaries that end this integration. Remember, we can only switch this order if it's the same exact region being depicted. So what about the x boundaries? They have to be in the form of x equals. So I'm just go back to my picture here again. If you just draw a few representative rectangles, I want you to see that if we draw the rectangles in that direction, 
that the left boundary is once again the parabola. But the right boundary is this vertical line. And the equation of that vertical line is x equals 5. But that's constant. The right-hand boundary is not changing shape. The left-hand boundary is changing shape. So, as king of all partial credit seekers, I know that the right-hand boundary is going to be x equals 5. Now the question is, is how do I fill in the parabola? Well, we know. Oh my goodness, this is way off the screen. Have you been doing that the whole time? y equals x squared is my parabola. If I were to solve this for x equals, that's plus or minus the square root of y. And the right side is the positive square root of y. So when I look at this shape, that parabola is x equals square root of y. And that becomes my left-hand boundary. There you have it. We just switched our first order of integration. Fantastic, huh? Catch you later.